Hey, welcome back to another video on our Keylogger application. This is part of an information security class and uh, its intention is to be educational. So if you are going to use Keyloggers to spy on somebody else, you'll take the consequences as if you were to plant a bug or a hidden video camera in their house. So not likely going to work well with the police on you. But the point here is to examine how the uh, functions work and how you can find out if your computer is infected with such a piece of software. So then in this video, we're going to take a look at how to send this video out by email. So the first thing I'd like you to do is to create a account, some account. It can be a Yahoo, Hotmail, or Gmail. It doesn't matter what it is. We're going to use Gmail because I know the port numbers and everything here. So I'm going to create an account called John Doe and make up a fake email address. Okay, so we're not going to create it. Wow, John Doe 12345 is already taken. Let's try this one. John Doe 68135. All right, so we're going to try that again and choose next. Okay, looks like uh, John Doe is now up and running. So we are going to send some email to John Doe's account from our keylogger. Okay, we're back into the code now for our application. So down in the uh, section about uh, here, part three, where it says periodically send the contents of this file to an external email address. So let's create a function that will do that. So to be able to do that, I'm going to see if I can find my way to the exterior of all of these other functions. So let's click on this first bracket and see where the end bracket is. Here's the end of main. So let's see, I'll put in a little note there, that's the main. So we're gonna start our new function here. So I'm going to put in a description of what my function will do. It will send the contents of the text file to an external email address. So just like we did before, I'm going to get the folder name of my documents. So we'll use the environment variable called get folder path and then get again with the special folder name my documents. All right, so now we're gonna get the file path. So I'm going to use the folder name and append onto it the file name. And so I'm gonna scroll up to see what that file name was. What did I call it? It was called keystrokes. So I'm going to just copy keystrokes and move back down. So keystrokes.txt. Okay, this is pretty simple. I'm going to do a log contents variable, and I'll just read all the text from the file that was in the, in the directory called my documents. Okay, in the next part, I'm going to create an email message. So I'm going to have to assemble the things like the contents, the destination, how to log into Gmail, all of that, and then we'll do a send message. The first thing I want to do is figure out what time it is. So I'm going to have a date time object called now. So my message, my email message is going to have a subject and it will be called message from keylogger. So the next thing I want to capture is the name of my computer and its IP address. So that way when we send an email message, we know where the message came from. So we're going to use a variable we're going to call host. So in this variable called host, we're going to start with something called DNS. And as you can see, if I type in DNS, nothing is recognized here by uh, Visual Studio. So I'm probably going to have to import something. And sure enough, system.net is the uh, method here that will give us the uh, DNS object. So now what can I do from here? I can choose get hosts, and I think it's called entry, get host entry. And then inside of there, we're going to get the DNS called get host uh, name, I believe it is. There it is, get host name. And so this will tell me what the computer name is on my network. Now, your computer may have more than one IP address, and so we can do a for each loop to go through our host record, and inside of there we will get the address list, and for each of those we'll get an IP number. All right, so now let's create a variable that we can start appending to and make this into our message. So we'll create a string called email body, and we'll set it to an empty string. So we'll append the IP address for each of these uh, uh, network cards. And we'll make it formatted a little bit to say this is an address. All right, so we'll take into our email body a couple of other pieces of data. We'll get the uh, username, so the domain name and also the username in the local computer so we can see who's logged in. We'll also use the uh, host name that we've uh, captured earlier. All right, we've also got a time stamp that we created earlier called uh, now. And so we'll attach that as well to our email body. All right, now it's time to start sending the email address. So I'm going to use a, a block here or an object called SMTP client. And so SMTP is simple mail transfer protocol. And this is something we have to import as well. So let's go see if we can do that from our 
special uh, imports and sure enough system.net.mail looks like that's going to work. All right, so now the rest of this is the name of the email server that will receive a new message. So Gmail is our address that we're trying to send to, and we're going to use their uh, gateway to get our mail out. And so you would only know 587 by looking at the configuration on the uh, documentation for Gmail. Now there's an object called mail message, and there's a special format and all the properties that go with this object. So we'll create a new one, and we'll call it mail message. So we need to tell it where this message is going to come from. So we'll make a new me email address. Now, I've already forgotten what the email address was for John Doe, so let's go back and check it out. So here I am in the Gmail page, and I'm looking at what John Doe has. So this is his email address. Okay, back into Visual Studio we go, and let's paste in where this is coming from. Now we have to tell it where the mail is going to. So you can have multiple messages or multiple emails that you send to. We're only going to send it to one, so we'll send it to ourselves. So I'll paste in the same email address that I used in the from address. The next thing we need to set is the subject of our email address. Well, we've already set the subject string further up here on line 94. It's called message from keylogger. So we will have to, uh, we'll set it to false. So this will make us log in. We'll have to provide our email address and password here in the code. The next item is called Enable SSL, and we have to set it to true because uh, anything that Gmail uses comes on an encrypted message uh, line here. All right, the next thing we need to do is provide our credentials so we can log in. There's an object called system.net called network credentials, and now we have to provide some parameters to make it work. First of all, we have to paste in our email address. Then you have to put in your password. So mine was password12345, I believe. So this is a clear text password. It's obviously going to compromise the account, and don't worry, I'm deleting this account after this uh, tutorial is done, so don't even try to log in. All right, one of the last things we can do is provide the actual contents of our message. So message or mail message dot body is what we're talking about, and this long string that we've been concatenating all this time is the body. Now it just occurred to me that we've got all this information in the email body, which tells us all about the address, the user, but we have not included the actual contents. So log contents is the string that needs to be added onto here first. So let's uh, go ahead and put that at the very end of our email body concatenation. So let's do email body and we'll do plus equals log contents. All right, so we're gonna have actual contents in our email message. All right, the simple act of uh, sending the message goes like this, client.send, and then type in your mail message. Should we send a message every time we do a keystroke? Well, that would be a little excessive. How about if we do it every once in a while? So let's go into where the uh, keystroke has been typed, and let's see if we were to call this called send new message, that would send a new message every single time we typed a keystroke. I think that's a little excessive, don't you? Let's see if we can limit this. So we're gonna say something like send every 100 characters uh, typed. So in the real life, you might send it as a thousand or might send it once every hour, but we're gonna do it every 100 characters because it's pretty easy to test. So we have to count the number of characters that we've typed. So let's go and put the, a new variable in near the top. So up here by the string called keylog, which we don't actually seem to be using, let's create a new one called static uh, number of keystrokes and we'll set it to zero. And it has to be some type of variable. Let's call it an int. And that should work. Actually, an int might be too short. It only goes up to certain thousands. Let's, let's make it a long. So that gives us like millions of keystrokes if we could count. All right, so now we got ourselves the number of keystrokes. When we initially start, it's zero. And down here in the loop now, so after we've typed in a letter, let's increment that called number of keystrokes and do a plus plus. Okay, so now we want to check to see if the keystrokes are a multiple of 100. So let's go to if the number of keystrokes, and let's use percent 100, and if that is equal to zero, then we know we've got ourselves a multiple of 100. So what's the percent operator? Uh, what is that one, div or mod, that tells us that uh, the remainder of a division problem? Uh, that would be the mod, right? So that means number of keystrokes mod 100. If, uh, if you got, for instance, let's say 500 keystrokes and you divide by 100, the remainder is zero, so that means a multiple of 100. Then we will send a new message. So only once in a while 
do we invoke a new email? Okay, let's run it and see how it works. Okay, so we got the application running. Let's bring up Notepad and delete what's there and let's type some stuff. Let's type in hello. Uh, this is a new message. Okay, I'm just going to type a whole bunch of letters. And I think we're probably past 100 by now. Let's see. That's a lot of letters. Okay, so we've typed in a whole bunch of letters. Let's go check to see what our email is. Okay, so I'm back in my Gmail account, and it says here, a message from Keylogger. Let's see what it says. There it is. It tells me my uh, IP address. It tells me my host name, and it tells me the time, and it tells me my Mac notebook, and then it tells me all the stuff that I've been typing. So we got it working. We got ourselves a uh, email message being sent out. We'll do one more video here that's going to make some things to hide this so we don't see the uh, console message floating around on the screen. And then we'll see how we can uh, make this uh, disguised as an icon that people would actually want to click. So we'll fix those things up in our final video on our keylogger.